Okay. Um, 2023 basic. Uh, I'm using Schedule C um, because that's going to match the video that I just took. So just uh, a quick analysis of what you see when you receive a schedule. Now, this is a known schedule, which means it's flown year round. Once you get into sportsman and above, you'll receive um, every competition what's called an unknown, which is one, a schedule that's not been seen before. Um, and the ability to read one of these pretty quickly is pretty important. Now, what you'll get is a pictorial diagram of what we call a resti. Uh, this is the language which is used for showing aerobatic maneuvers. Um, now, <clears throat> at the moment, my recording software doesn't allow me to do um, mouse gestures over the top. So as I talk through, if I happen to miss something that I have a, um, talking about, just uh, let me know uh, in the comments yeah, or wherever this is going to end up. So um, without further ado, I'll just go straight into it. Uh, first thing you'll notice, as I was saying, is all of the maneuvers. That's this section here. Um, it's good to know what they are and reading the Arresti Dictionary will give you the names of each of the manoeuvres. Um, and it's worth understanding what those manoeuvre names translate back to, because when you've got a caller next to you, they're going to read out what the names are, and then how to fly each one if they're a good caller. So for instance, uh, I won't do number one, um, because it is just a single one roll. Um, so you should be able to do that. However, if we have a look at number two, this is a shark's tooth uh, where you are flying horizontal upright. You pull to a vertical upline, do a half roll on the upline. The second half of that line you're inverted and then you pull three quarters of a loop, one might say, to a vertical downline and then you pull to exit upright. So understanding what the name isn't so much as important as understanding what uh, the sequence of bits are within that maneuver. Um, at least not for mine. But, you know, the name will give you an idea of the shape. This one's called a shark's tooth. If I go to the next one, we call this a humpty bump. You go humpty and bump. And the next one is a lay down humpty bump or a humpty bump on a 45 line. Uh, other ones, this single arrowhead at the top here indicates that that's a hammerhead or a uh, stall turn on the rudder. Uh, basically, you pull the vertical up line, uh, then you do your hammerhead, which is a very graceful maneuver um, so that you're falling around the center of gravity. Um, and then coming down. Uh, this is a teardrop, uh, not too dissimilar from uh, a Cuban, uh, just one's vertical, one's horizontal. Um, we call this an Immelman because it goes low to high um, and the opposite of this is a split S, not appropriate here. Uh, split S will be high down towards low. You'll note it by the half loop with either a roll, they may or may not have rolls, but in uh, the basic sequence, they do. And this, notice these uh, white arrows here, that is indicative of a positive spin. You'll notice one full and one half, this is a one and a half turn spin um, into a vertical line, and then pulling to exit upright. Um, one other thing to notice is there are some lines that are dotted red or, or, you know, dashed red rather. That is not to indicate that you are inverted necessarily. It's to indicate what we call negative G or um, you, you have a, a negative influence on your aircraft. Um, like, for instance, in, in all of these, they are... Um, Rel you're all inverted with the exception of this one and a half turn spin. It's red all the way down, and that's because you have pushed down, exerting a negative g-force 
onto your aircraft rather the G is going from wheels to cockpit um, the g-force as opposed to standard where gravity is pulling downwards from cockpit down towards the wheels so just something for clarification there the other thing that's really important with a sequence as you receive it is this schedule here and what this tells you is the degree of difficulty for each component of a maneuver and the total K at the end is the total amount of points available from this maneuver. You'll note some are higher than others. In particular, number six is the highest uh, K maneuver or, or the maneuver with the highest points because, well, a hammerhead is actually quite hard to get done properly. So it has a lot of points to it. Uh, whereas number 10, you might think a one and a half turn positive spin is actually quite hard. It is. However, on the face of it, this is just a vertical line with a one and a half turn spin. So, yeah, you'll see the points aren't as high for that maneuver because it's not so much a stall, it is a stall entry for the spin, but it's still just a straight line. And you'll see this throughout all of your manoeuvres, that, that some things that don't make sense in terms of the amount of score that you get for them, um, you know, it, it, it can be quite disconcerting, uh, especially when one of the hardest manoeuvres in the upper sequences are your rolling turn, which is effectively a roll on a line, but that line is curved, is the way that they score it. Anyway, I digress. So that is your sequence. Now, flight planning is also an important part of, of any aerobatics. And looking at this, there are a few points that can be made about how you would plan this flight out. Um, now, there's not much to be said about the roll. As I said earlier, basically it is one roll. Uh, on a horizontal line, that line also has to be parallel, as with all of these maneuvers, to the, either the um, the runway or whatever nominated line you are flying on. Um, I've been at competitions where we've had uh, two flight lines running off the same runway, so you could not use the runway as the flight line. Um, however, your airspace, say this is left to right across the whole of the airspace, ignore the stuff in the background, um, this has to be parallel to wherever you're standing, which might be here um, and the judge's tent you might be standing just in front actually and the judge's tent is behind you there's your flight box you will be parallel flying parallel um, any deviation from that by rights should be downgraded so let's get rid of all that yuck um, first thing is a roll but you're going into a 45 up line these uplines will carry you well to the end of the box, um, these 45 uplines. So even though this is written in the middle, it could be a wise decision depending upon the wind conditions for you to uh, either start this and do it before the center or after. One of the benefits of iMac is none of these, pos these um, maneuvers are positional or may I say prescribed to be in a certain, done in a certain position. So you can do them anywhere as long as you're parallel to the flight line and you give yourself enough time to do the next manoeuvre so that the judges can see it. And that's the second point. Say, for instance, you're doing this. Um, actually, no. Say you're doing your one and a half turn spin and yet you're halfway to, I live in Melbourne, you're halfway to Sydney. Um, you've flown this top line from 9 to 10, a fair distance, you haven't been able to wash off speed, and hence, while this is up high, it's slightly um, harder to be able to be viewed. There is a flight um, positioning score um, called airspace that you will get judged down on if at any stage your plane is in a position where it cannot be judged uh, as well as, as it could be. So note, you can position your plane 
anywhere in the fl- in the sky in the box. However, the further you are out in the upper corners of your flight box, uh, it'll be harder to judge, and you will get downgraded for um, being in a position where it can't be judged. Um, the last point, I uh, don't want to overcomplicate things. This is for the basic guys who are new to this sport. Um, is just you know when you're going through your planning, uh, determine you know where you're going to do things slightly different. And things that stand out for mine are when you come to doing lines in between maneuvers. Um, note that as soon as your wings level at the end of a maneuver, you get judged from that point uh, as part of the next maneuver. So if this was actually positional from here right through to about wings level on the exit would all be judged as three. The line you draw from the exit of three, exit of two through to line three, one might actually draw a line there. From here through to here, is all considered part of maneuver three. So in your flight planning, try to keep these lines in between as short as possible to give yourself the best chance to retain points. You shouldn't have lines that are too long because then you've got uh, far too many opportunities for, for the plane to go all right or for you to put in even the most smallest of uh, bad inputs you know by keeping your lines shorter between maneuvers you will uh, give less opportunity for the judges to find anything wrong the other last point actually uh, that I wanted to make is 45 lines um, most planes will decelerate on a 45 up line sorry let me just uh, grab something that's better 45 up line here, we have another one here, um, whereas down the bottom here we have a 45 down line. Now, it's worth noting that when you get on a, any sort of up line, your plane will decelerate unless you're throttling right through and you've got more than enough power. It will decelerate uh, in, in most cases. Um, because of that, because any play time you have a line with something in the middle, like a roll, the lines leading up to that element and after that element need to be equal. That would be this line here needs to be equal in length to the line in front of it. Ugly circles, please ignore. If you're traveling on a 45 line and you're decelerating, you shouldn't be too reliant on the amount of time you're drawing that line. Of course, it's all well and good to go from, uh, say, the bottom line. As you're going through here, we go, say, one, two, and count it. But after you've done that roll, you may have lost some airspeed. So it's worth putting in an extra bit of time on the second half when you're moving on an upline. Because you're decelerating, as you go through that. So thinking in, t in terms of uh, the airspeed, uh, don't be too reliant on just counting um, the length of the lines by, by say, one and two and. Try to find that happy medium between counting and knowing how much extra you need to put on after a mid-line manoeuvre um, to make sure that the lines are equal because the judges are supposed to judge you on those lines being equal and uh, downgrading against that, not on your counting. Same could be said for the downline, which is this one here. After you've done this, say, five-eighths of a loop of, the, um, of this Cuban, you're going to reach this top, throttle off, and you will be accelerating all the way down this line from top to bottom, and even more so if you manage to put your throttle back on. Please don't do that. Um, that said, it's worth noting uh, that you should have a fairly large loop, 5 eighths loop. Oh, wrong bit. Should have a fairly large 5 eighths loop here. 
so that you've got buy yourself enough time to allow for that acceleration and to allow yourself enough time on the second part of the line after you've done the roll because that will make you accelerate even faster and the ground will come up very quickly this is where people panic so if you draw this first line fairly short you only need a couple of plane lengths to show that you've drawn a line but always worth to put in a couple more just to make sure that the judges see it and then do your half roll and then match up the second half of the line to that first one if they're equal there will be no downgrade just something to keep in mind when you're dealing with 45 lines when you're drawing them note acceleration on the down line and deceleration on the up line and being able to account for it um, I think that is enough oh before we go any further number seven even worse You've done a full five-eighths of a loop, going to a vertical downline. And halfway down the li downline, you're expected to do a half roll. Again, recommendation is don't leave that half roll until too late. Otherwise, you'll find you won't have enough time to match this second line after the roll or the second half line after the roll with the first. I think that's um, pretty convoluted. Um, hopefully that hasn't been too much gibberish, but uh, that should give you a clear indication of uh, what's expected in general uh, when you're flying the basic manoeuvres. Obviously, it's got to be said, you are flying parallel to the runway or the nominated line. Um, every degree out on that is 0.5 of a uh, point off for a manoeuvre. They're out of 10. Um, and yeah, those those points, those downgrades can add up pretty quickly when you compound multiple off lines. All right, let's go to the sequence. All right, bringing out the old yak yak. You'll notice bottom left hand side that I have. Uh, I fly mode 2 and the reason I keep making points about rudder is because before iMac I never used rudder um, I was a bank and yank kind of pilot so I'm pretty you know intent on, on making sure that everyone learns how to use it properly one thing you'll notice here the wheels as this plane went past were perfectly aligned one over the other that's a good test to see whether or not you're flying parallel to the runway or your flight path I'll see if I can get that happening again. Um, obviously, you want to be online here. First manoeuvre is your roll. So try to keep this as straight as possible. I'm doing a hash job of it. Might be lucky to get away with a 7 on that. More likely a 6. The second one is a shark's tooth. So we'll pull into 45. Half roll on the 45, make sure you draw that line nice and long, notice how it's decelerating. I picked the Yak in this case because it does decelerate a lot more than say your extras um, and your other planes. You'll also notice I've got auto zoom on there, more to give you an idea of where the plane is situated. I've got any um, wind effects in the sim at the moment, so... Alright, watching the wheels. This is for the Humpty, and I like to draw the first line as close to centre as possible. Vertical up line. We do a half loop over the top. Going to vertical down line. And then we pull to exit upright. Obviously with the auto zoom, I don't quite know where the ground is, so you don't have to be on the same height on this particular manoeuvre. Um, now this one is the lay down Humpty. As I was saying, we want to draw this first line pretty long and you'll notice it's decelerating. So on the second line, go a little bit longer. Pull your half loop over the top to a 45 degree down line. You'll notice that your down lines as you are, are higher will be steeper 
or they will appear steeper. Don't worry, judges look for that. They know when you're doing a 45. Okay, now we're back into loop for the center. You'll notice that I'm slightly yawed out, so I'm just gonna put in a bit of left rudder before I start. Now, I like to do loops big, only because it implies smoothness. Now, the Yak may not have enough power to make it as big as I want, considering this model's set with a DA150 equivalent, bit small for a 3.1 meter Yak. But yeah, I think I pinched that loop. I can't even see the ground. After the loop, we've got the hammerhead. So we'll pull to vertical. Now keep a little bit of throttle on. Get into your high rudder rate. Bit of throttle on so that you've got some wash over the top and she's done. Try not to waggle the tail because that's points off. Oh, and we're smashed. Auto zoom got me that time, so where shall we take her up? Let's come back for that hammerhead. I'll just do a uh, quick half Cuban. Go up for the hammer. Throttle slowly off. If she's starting to lean one way, just go with it. Okay. I'll pull out a little bit earlier. Yeah, miss the ground. Okay, and on this one, we have a teardrop. So pull to 45. We have five eighths of a loop to a vertical downline. I like to get the downline as straight and in front of me as possible. Then pull to exit upright. Hopefully I'm still parallel to the runway. I don't think I am. After this, oh, I buggered that up. There was supposed to be a half roll on the downline of that. So I'm going to go back up and we'll start at number six, which is the hammerhead, because you can never get enough practice with hammerheads. Going up, high rate. Bit of throttle. There we go. Nice. All right. I'll pull to horizontal exit upright. Wheels level. Gone past this time. We'll see if it makes any difference. Pulling over the top to a vertical downline. That's five eighths of a loop to vertical downline. We have a half roll on the downline. We pull to exit upright. Try to keep those lines horizontal. Now this one, we have a half Cuban, so that's pulling five eighths of a loop. Because the 45 downline has a, a half roll on the downline, you want to make your loop quite big, and you want to be on that roll pretty quickly. So once you've got your 45 downline, do your roll. Make sure you leave enough room to draw a line after the roll that's equivalent to the line before the roll. Alright. Second last manoeuvre is an Emmelman. Use this to gain a heap of height. Some planes, they'll, they'll drop out of the sky pretty quickly once they get into a spin. Some planes won't. Now, this being a yak, it'll slow down pretty quickly. Try to keep the line straight by controlling your pitch. And then as soon as she drops, get into your one and a half. Make sure you draw a straight line here. And then pull to vertical upright. Oh, sorry, horizontal upright. Well, that was pretty shambolic. What I reckon is, considering uh, there should be enough time to do some another one, Let's just go for it and see if I can do something better this time. All right, now a couple of hints. Don't call in the box until you're on your line. You get judged for the moment you call it. So I'd say in the box. That would have been possibly a seven. Okay, now we have our shark's tooth. 
draw it nice and long draw this one for a little bit longer in terms of time that should be equivalent length vertical downline then pull to exit upright if your elevators aren't matched at this point you'll start to see it skewed whenever you do that that's not what's happening here what's happening is I'm putting in aileron as I'm putting in elevator because my springs aren't tight enough on my gimbals okay vertical upline start uh, your inwards so I'll just add a little bit of left rudder just before over the top throttle off vertical downline pull to exit upright okay notice where the wheels were that was pretty good okay now we have the lay down humpty bump which is a 45 line you'll notice that looks pretty steep but that's actually 45 we've got a half roll on the 45 up line i am drawing it very long even longer on the second one i want to give myself as much time on the down i think i throttled off a little bit too much there I want to give myself as much time on that 45 down line. Comes in handy when you're doing things on that 45 down line, which you will in the upper levels. Okay, I'm hoping I'm still parallel. Uh, what do we have here? A loop. Now, loops just need to be smooth. Wings need to be perpendicular to the flight line trying not to adjust any positioning with your ailerons just keep it nice and smooth um, we have our hammerhead again draw your line watch off speed high rate if it's going to go generally go into the wind where you can it should automatically try yawing into the wind anyway there All right. Oh, I am parallel. Okay. Uh, this one is the teardrop. Not parallel there. So a little bit of left rudder. 45 up line. I'm going to pull over the top. Make it nice and big and see if I can catch it right at the middle line for the down line. Pinch that. Probably would have lost points. Half roll. Pull to exit upright. The lines weren't equal, so that would have been at least two points downgrade okay uh, we have a Cuban nice and big want to buy some time for that 45 down line because the plane will accelerate draw that line do a half roll draw a line pull to exit upright notice that snuck up really quick I've been caught out a few times with that Okay, Immelman. Half roll as soon as you're horizontal. And prepare for your one and a half turn spin. I like to go high rates on this and let it fall in. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Draw a vertical downline. That wasn't quite vertical. And then we say out of the box. That should be it. This is where we say thank you judges, thank you scribes. The big thing is just keep your line straight. Um, it's the easiest place you can lose points and the easiest place that you can keep your points. So, And when you're doing corrections, just use your rudder. Rudder only. Alright, that'll do.